Hi, Gene here with today's thought. If you saw yesterday's thought, and maybe the day before and the day before, you may notice a small difference looking at me today. I got a haircut. I figured I was about due, so I hope everybody likes the temporarily new me till I have to get a haircut again. It's going to be uh, a while. So uh, now on today's thought, which is actually a kind, well, I want to say an apology, but I don't really think that I have to personally personally apologize because I, um, I'm a conservative. I'm not responsible. I don't feel I am for what I'm going to uh, apologize for. So I guess I'm apologizing on behalf of my generation. What you're going to see in a moment is a, 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 a young woman of uh, Generation Z. And she is, uh, she's is she got a very strong rant, very angry at the uh, previous generations. And the main previous generation would be mine, the baby boomer generation. But other ones besides, the problem that I said, well, give you a little bit about my past. When I was uh, the age of, the, the, of this woman that you're going to hear from, I was... Uh I was making, this was, oh God, uh, in the 70s, it would be the late 70s. I moved to New York. I was born in Detroit. I moved to New York in 1977. I live in Tennessee today. It's not really relevant, but um, I would say the last couple, so say 75, 76, I was making $5 an hour. That was my salary, $5 an hour, and some, you know, dead-end job anyways, which is why I left Detroit, but uh, $5 an hour, but I had, I lived in a townhouse, my own house, no no roommates, just me, my regular, my standard meal was two, uh, two uh, we called them their Delmonico steaks, basically a ribeye steak, uh, not a one inch or a half inch, but still two Steaks. I think they were about three dollars something each. The the point I'm making, and I had a car. The the point I'm making is that, and it was a, a new car. It was a. Now I had a lot of used cars before that, but this was my latest one. Was a brand new, and I was making the payments myself. My payments. Oh, you get this. My payment was a Ford Maverick. So that was one of the mistakes of my life buying a Maverick. But uh, um, the the, the the point is, my the whole the price of the whole car, brand new. Get this, because now my car. I've seen uh, my car now, Mazda three. I bought it in in 2019, 2018 mile, uh, 2018 model. I paid about eighteen thousand for for it. Now I understand the new Mazdas are going for something like twenty five, twenty seven, something like that. My my first car that I bought, brand new, my Maverick. Seventeen ninety-five, so only eight. We'll say eighteen hundred bucks. That's what it costs. The point is that in those days, I could live very well on what you would consider a low salary. But in fact, my dream was to make ten thousand dollars a year. If I was making ten thousand dollars a year, if that was my annual income, I would be sitting pretty. I mean, I wouldn't be wealthy, but I would be doing fine. So this one, what's happened since then, though, is. And this was shortly after uh, Nixon. His biggest mistake is not Watergate. His biggest ma mistake was uh, closing the gold window. That's when the currency started to depreciate. And plus voting for more and more spending year after year to keep these entitlements going. And uh, bottom line is I go to the supermarket today and I it's hard to get out of there without spending I don't know 30 40 50 bucks and that's because uh, I'm one of these guys who don't people who don't shop much in advance so I'll, I'll buy just what I need for the couple of days but if you're shopping for a family if you're buying a week's groceries uh, the point this woman is going to make you can hear from her is that this idea about generate which I kind of subscribe to about generate Generation, because you, you see these videos of say of uh, uh, generations he complaining. Oh, I have to show up for. Uh, I have to come into the office. I have to show up for work. What's wrong with these lazy uh, sit on your asses younger generation? But this woman makes a very good point that because she works for. Well, you know what? Uh, enough of me. Uh, I'm I'm just saying what she's going to say. So let's just let her say it. And here she is. 
I cannot stand how the news has been dogging Gen Z and calling them lazy for not wanting to work a nine to five for the rest of their lives. Let me put it in perspective for everybody who's a little confused here, okay? I work five days out of the week, 40 hours a week, okay? I do not make enough to live on my own. I would not make enough to pay rent, water, electric, and eat all by myself. I would not be capable of doing that. 20 years ago when you were getting started, you could live on your own. 20 years ago when you first started, you were able to do everything that I am now struggling to do. Let me add another perspective here. You've been working for 20 years. You have 20 years of working experience behind your belt. You have 20 years of experience in a career that has allowed you to gain raises, to get more money, to profit you in an economy that you created. You can sit here and you can call Gen Z lazy all you want, but I've been working my tail end off just to barely make it by. And respectfully, I don't want to do that for the rest of my life. I don't want to work my tail end off, wasting all of my life working just to barely be able to pay my bills. And that is what you created, not Gen Z. We're just here getting started. You've been doing it for the last 20 years. You tell me how it got ruined. We can sit here and we can call Gen Z lazy all you want, but you let the economy turn into what it did. You let it all run to hell. And now it's Gen Z's fault because we don't want to work to fix your mistakes. As I was saying, I, I can't really apologize for myself because I voted against all the, the things that are causing her problems. But uh, so I can't say I, I'm sorry for what I did because I didn't do anything wrong. But uh, for I'm sorry about what our generation did. I'm sorry for what her life is like today because of us older people. And uh I don't know. We the, what you need. We need is a, a Fed, we need a president that will uh, and a Congress that will cut spending or at least stop increasing. And number one, the most important thing that the Fed can do is just keep a stable currency. We the, we have this Humphrey Hawkins Act, which makes the president, which makes the the Fed, the Federal Reserve, um, the Fed responsible for two things: for monetary policy and fiscal policy, which is wrong. The Congress is supposed to be responsible for fiscal policy, budgeting, spending, and all of that. The uh, um, the the Fed should only be responsible for keeping the currency steady, because that's where that's what the problem is. That the currency has been uh, has been just uh, the value of the dollar has been declining year after year. And as I a point, I don't want to belabor this and make it too long. But as a, a point I made in an earlier thought, if you ask me to, uh, I'll, I'll discuss it again. But the the increase in wages does not keep up with inflation. So if you have inflation, you're going to get poorer every year. Uh, well, one very simple example, or um, that should be obvious, uh, you, if you get a raise uh, to uh, account for inflation, that accounts for the inflation the pre uh, the previous year's inflation. In other words, if, if prices went up uh, as it did under Biden one year, nine percent, you get a nine percent raise. But that doesn't cover the inflation of the the, the up the uh, the next year if if the inflation is still is still raging. So you're behind the eight ball, and you have to remember that you get that one raise, and then your your salary salary review would be a year later. But the the store owner, the, the shopkeeper, can raise his prices instantly. He his and, and all the way up uh, up the line. So the farmer has to raise his prices. Uh, the wholesaler has to raise his prices, and then the um, then the the, the end uh, retailer has to raise his prices, and it's it's instantaneous each time. One, two, three, but your your salary won't go up, and then when your salary go it does go up, it will only account for the previous year's um, inflation. So you're always behind the ball, and that's why you have what you have today. Because uh, as I said, uh, the um, Nixon was preceding my generation, I guess the the. Um, but uh, closing the gold window and floating the value of the dollar instead of having it linked to the value of gold. And he did that because the alternative would have been to cut spending. Um, because well, what happened was it was backed by gold. You could uh, now it's uh, your dollar says Federal Reserve note on it, but it used to say gold certificate in those days. You could trade your dollar in for 30, uh, 35 bucks and get an ounce of gold. And Nixon 
close the, the window. So what happened was um, we were starting to uh, spend too much. The, the, the value of the dollar is uh, threatened because of that. And the foreign countries who had uh, were holding dollars in their in their banks or foreign banks, they started turning them in and say, okay, we want it. We want our gold. We want the gold. And Nick said, we didn't have the gold. That was a problem. We were printing dollars that were exceeding the amount of gold that we had to back the, the dollar either was exceeding or was about to exceed. So uh, Nixon delinked. He said he called it a temporary measure, but it turned out, obviously, this temporary measure uh, persists to today. And now uh, gold is slightly, last time I, I heard, slightly under 2000 bucks. So from 30, 35 bucks uh, an ounce to 2000 bucks an ounce. That's what happened. And that's why the, the, this poor woman, and I don't know, how we get out of it, um, how we bring prices down. Well, I, I do know how. You need a recession. That's how you do it. And that's the other thing the Fed does. They're supposed to, the idea is they were having these, what they called panics, which were severe recessions in, in the, the 19th century. And the Fed was supposed to prevent all that. But we've had several recession, uh, re, um, recessions uh, since then. And so it doesn't prevent it. But what happens when we have a recession and the government starts printing money, the, the Fed reduces interest rates. So your, the value of your dollar goes down instead of having the real solution is, which was possible in my day, which is why I'm fairly comfortable. She said, how can she say for the future we've had, she said 20 years. I've had more than 20 years to put money aside, and I put a little money aside every year. And I'm not wealthy, but I'm comfortable. I'm financially comfortable, and it's because I was able to save. This poor woman cannot save. And that that is another tragedy uh, right there. And uh, again, I... Uh, I, I I just feel sorry for her. I feel sorry for this younger generation, what they've. But um, I only feel sorry, and this I'll end on this. I only feel sorry for people of this generation who want to do something about it and vote for Republicans. If you're still voting for Democrats and you're still voting for uh, in, entitlements to get you through the these uh, uh, what your income doesn't pay for or whatever, I can kind of understand it. But I don't feel sorry for 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 those generations. Z members because you're voting for the same thing and you're going to doom the generation after you and uh, I guess that's my thought for today I, I went on long enough so thanks for stopping by if you could subscribe that would really be great share this video with anyone you think would benefit from it but most of all come back and see me again I would love to see all of you again and until I do see all of you again bye <laughs>